Chris Burke bails something for us. Hey, boys. Well, gentlemen, the Pacers head coach, Frank Vogel, has helped turn this team into a powerhouse. He's had a reputation for positivity, lifting his players up and boosting their confidence. As Paul George put it, coach has no shame in calling you out. If you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get embarrassed. No one wants that, Kevin. No calling out, Doris, that's for sure. Thanks. Pick by West. Stuckey kicks it to West. The jump hook. Nice touch on the bank shot. West has got eight points. The Hawks have gone three of three from the field since halftime. Millsap sets the pick for T. The Pacers pull it in. Now still a great start to the half after hitting their first three even before that miss. Hill passes to Hibbert. Stucky dishes to Hill. West setting the pick for George. Charity swipe shot. Connects the jumper drops. George has got his third bucket of the night. And not even three quarters out of the way. So many lead changes. One heck of a game. I mean, guys, this has been outstanding in terms of the effort that both sides have been able to pull up. I go over there at Steve. He's enjoying every second. Yeah, yeah, oh, me too. Yeah. This has been great, guys. And the fans getting their money for it. Both teams just playing so hard up here. Scott is checked in for Paul Milson. In Indiana with a change here, too. Scola's checked in. A lot of pressure and expectation last year for the Pacers in the playoffs. No longer were they an underdog or a feel-good story. They were expected to make a good run. And they would return to the Eastern Conference Finals after some scares for them in the early rounds, as you saw it. But, uh, Mark, once again, they could not beat the Heat. And the difference there, Kevin, was the mentality and fortitude of the Heat. And clearly, the talent was pretty equal, but I thought the leadership of LeBron and the brilliance of Dwayne Wade was just a little too much for a young, evolving team to handle. Good insight. Scott inside, guarded by Scola. The Hawks need to get off a shot here. Team for three. No good. Excellent D there from Hill. For Indiana, they've gone two of four here to start the second half. Hibbert with a screen for Hill. An easy layup after coming off the pick. And the Pacers lead by three. The second he got around the pick and shook his man, it was straight to the bucket for the easy dude. Very, very well done. They set the pick. Here's Teague. An easy two points on the way. Teague's got four this quarter. It's really tough to get that shot off with the size differential there. It's not an individual matchup he's going to win every time, especially in the post. Very well done. I didn't think he had any business operating down there with the big fellas. Screen by score, and looks like the illegal pick was set. Yep, that's right. That'll get their attention. Yeah, good call there. You could tell he was moving into the defender when he tried to set the screen. Yeah, lowered that shoulder, dipped right into him, too. I mean, he was going to be called on that foul either way. Looking at who's out there now for the Hawks. Eldon Brands checked in for Horford. Cephalosha comes in for Damari Carroll. Kent Bazemore is checked in for Kyle Corfin. And it's Dennis Schroeder in for Jeff T. Here's Bazemore. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. Kent Bazemore undrafted back in 2012, but he caught on with the Old State Warriors after an impressive summer league. And while he didn't play a ton of minutes, he caught national attention for his enthusiasm on the bench. And the second free throw, good. And Bazemore traded at the deadline last season from the Golden State Warriors to the Lakers and in exchange for Steve Blake. Really liked his game in college, and he played extensive minutes for the Lakers. I think it's pretty clear that he belongs in the NBA. He just has to cut down his turnovers, but it's a nice two-way play. From six away, Cephalosha kicks it to Bazemore. Scott, the pass to Cephalosha. He feeds it to Schroeder. The Hawks have had seven opportunities at the free throw line and made good on five of them. And they now lead as the free throw drops for him. You know, the Hawks haven't been an elite team, but they do have the longest active playoff streak in the East. They've been the seven straight postseasons. While they haven't advanced very far, I still think there's something to be said for getting to the postseason seven years in a row. 
And that's why teams emphasize the use of screens and picks just to get you some open looks like that one. They set the pick. He dishes it to Scott. Out left to the wing. Here's Schroeder. Rebound by Mahimi. And for the Hawks with that playoff streak, for a team, Steve, that has missed the playoffs in the eight seasons prior, that's something to be proud of. Yeah, I mean, Atlanta has shown consistent winning basketball that year for the last few, six, seven years. They've shed some of their marquee players, suffered some big injuries, but they've still found a way to remain competitive. And Sloan kicks to Mahini. A screen on Brent. Here's Miles. And again, it's the Pacers from deep. Defense just has to fight over the top of those screens. Especially when the ball is in his hands. I mean, he doesn't miss too many open shots. Take this chance now to show you the State Farm assist of the game. Well, with this assist, he shows you just what a well-rounded guard he really is. Kind of a combo guard, even though he's listed as a, a shooting guard. Really a diverse offensive skill set. We're almost seeing more of that, aren't we? With, with some guys that have point guard skills that can play both those yeah, positions. Yeah, for sure. And so in the game for the Pacers. Down low, Raston Hill. Hill is out there with Rodney Stuck. And it's Hill in the three. And the Hawks making a change here. Corbis checked in. George is checked in for Indiana. Here's Schroeder. Kicks it to Horford. But 10 foot. Hits the front of the rim and out. Indiana leading by three. Here's George. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. You have to wonder as we've seen Paul George go from two to three. Great to fantastic the last couple of seasons. What's his ceiling? I mean, with his size and skill set, there's very little that he can't do on the floor. Well, Clark, for Paul George, it's incredible to think that he was taken as late as he was in the draft, but as you said earlier, his ceiling is through the roof, and he's right up there with LeBron and KD as the best players in the game. Yeah, I agree with you there, man. Really nice to watch his development because he's made progress each year. They'll take an incredible amount of hard work for him to surpass either of those two in the grand scheme of things, but I wouldn't doubt anything when it comes to Paul George's ceiling. It's just going to be a matter of his commitment to the work and staying focused on realizing his tremendous God-given ability. Here's Schroeder. Second shot opportunity, and he gets it to go. And that's now 17 points for Millsap. Well, he certainly isn't the one to blame for them being in the hole. He's been on the money with his game. Hibbert with a screen for George. The kick out to Hill. Pass to Hibbert. Indiana moving it around. Hibbert with a screen for George. Back to Hibbert. Goes up off the pick. Good. And the Pacers lead by five. That's outstanding hang time improvisation right there. Game moves along. Two minutes gone here in the fourth. Schroeder dishes to Horford. Hides the hook. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. Paul Millsap, a first time All Star in 2014, really helped the Hawks not miss Josh Smith that much. He gave them superior production at two thirds the price. The value conscious general manager, that's a big win. Jeff T, he's checked in for the Hawks. Indiana leading by four. Hill passes to Stuckey. He kicks it to West. Dishes it to Hill. Hibbert with a screen on Teague. In the corner, George with it. Good, and it's Hill picking up the assist. George has got the lead up to seven now for the Pacers. Mm, they are killing them with that three-point shot here in the second half. Well, the defense fully stretched out trying to stop that shot and still not able to get it done. And the call will be against George Hill. That is his first foul of the game. 
Just over two and a half minutes played now here in the final quarter of regulation. Teague against Hill. Here's Porter for three. And it's Roy Hibbert with the rebound. Hibbert's got three rebounds now in this one. Hard work on the glass once again, fellas. They put a lot of effort into their rebound. Well, you get more rebounds, you get more possessions, more shots at the hoop, and oftentimes that decides the game. George, that's a two-pointer. And the foul goes on Roy Hibbert. That is his first foul of the game. Mahaney's check in for Roy Hibbert. And so it's Atlanta with it. Seven-point differential. T kicks to Carroll. Here's Horford. That went off the back iron and out. Really high quality shot there. Just a little off with his release. That miss right there will definitely leave him taking his head. Here's George. Atlanta with the rebound. Millsap's got three rebounds now in this one. Horford sets a screen for T. Out left of the wing. The pass to Millsap. T dishes to Kira. Pocket four. Here's Corver. And once again off the mark by Atlanta. Been a real difficult game for him offensively, and it's cost him. West a screen on T. And it's Hill penetrating. Left side, George. Hands the shot from the wing. George has got 11 in the second half. He's played an important role in their offense today, guys. Without him, they may not be in the lead. A moment to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? I was able to listen in on what Mike Budenholzer had to say to his team. He told them to stick with what's worked to this point, saying, listen, they're giving us all the space we need inside. Let's take advantage of it. Keep walking the ball inside. Teague against Hill. Here's the screen, and George, here we go. And the wide open shot from Stucky. Off target there, that would have pushed the lead to double digits. Corver passes to T. Carroll for three. That's good, and so T with the assist. T's got his fourth assist in this one. Hill kicks it to West. Pass to the heater. Coming up, a perfectly placed assist. And the Pacers lead by six. He had his head on the slip and was able to pick out the pass and get the assist. This game is going to take a big swing. Mark, if the deep continues to clear it like that, get up easy time. Yeah, that's the kind of defense we expect to see in a blowout, Kevin, or even an exhibition game, not a close game like this. And you know what, Kevin? like that he didn't choose to just lay it up. I mean, he threw it down with force. Teague against Ducky. Horford. Cut in the foul. That one on Jordan. Al Horford clearly has the touch. The Pacers making a switch here. Hibbert's checked in. You know, the tension could not be any higher right now. I mean, he looked like he was shooting free throws at the time. It's just a cool customer. Hill misses the West. Away. Now Horford with the rebound. That's not a sight you see very often. He has a great feel for that jump shot, especially when he's open. Teague, the pass to Cook. To take the lead. He's off from three. And they foul intentionally. They're going to have to do that now again and again. They're not in the penalty yet. So that's right. No other option but to foul and hope for some misses. Yep, you got to extend the game here. Try to keep that clock from moving. Third on the first, and that will put them up by two. And so he drops them both. It's a three-point game. Absolutely massive free throw. That'll force them into a three-point attempt. 11 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Nice play there on the end. Eight seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. And here's George. It's good! There's the game-winning shot! Nothing but zeros on the clock. 
as he drains the winner. What a finish.